honesty, integrity, learning agility, and unparalleled confidence in themselves is perhaps the greatest trait a leader can ever have. My guest today embodies all this and some more. Mr. Shailendra Goswami is a chairman and managing director of Pushkaraj Engineering and Coherent Networking Solutions. He is an advisor and mentor to several businesses. He is a widely respected industrialist with decades of rich experience in marketing, manufacturing, operations, cost-effective business strategies, setting up of greenfield projects, consulting, mentoring and advising MSME sectors on business development. Thank you so much, sir, for your time. Your leadership journey has been full of rich experiences. Could you take us through how it has been for you? Thank you, Aparna. Uh, it is wonderful uh, to be again uh, on your channel. Well, uh, the journey has been fantastic. Uh, my professional journey, almost uh, 43 years uh, post my post-graduation. So I'll just take you down the memory lane. In 1974, I did my engineering from College of Engineering, Pune. And during the college, I did many things uh, uh, full of extracurricular activities, uh, played nationals and, and things like that. And ultimately, I became a general secretary of the college uh, in 1974, unopposed. So this is where my leadership began uh, and I realized that I have something in me where uh, I can project that to the society or the community at large. Post engineering, uh, I was uh, involved in our family business for a while, uh, uh, but then uh, friends and um, well-wishers, including my family members, they said to me that we do not uh, require your talent at this particular stage, so why don't you pursue some post-graduation? And that is where I applied and I got admission in IIM Bangalore. This is where I pursued my post-graduation uh, primarily in uh, marketing. And uh, marketing being uh, the subject which I uh, really held close to my heart. In 1977, when I passed out, six months prior to that, I got a job uh, where I did my project. And when I presented that project report to the board of directors in that company, they said that you are joining us. So even prior to post-graduation, I had a job in my hand. And uh, with that job, I really came out from Management Institute. Uh, I stuck with it for uh, like any uh, first job is, uh, you can say, a missed call. And uh, it did happen in my case also. I couldn't last more than six months because uh, we couldn't gel there. And uh, I decided to change. And thereafter, the job which I took, it was in Pune City alone. And I stuck to that job for nearly 14 years. And after that, I switched to entrepreneurship and I established uh, our uh, Pushkaraj group. During uh, the course of uh, these years, post my graduation from IIM Bangalore, I was fortunate enough uh, to be selected as member uh, board of governors uh, of uh, IIM Bangalore. So that was the topmost point uh, one could uh, really aim uh, from the alma mater that you passed out. You've been selected as a member of the Board of Governors. And then for some family reasons, I could not accept it because of my own commitments in business and other uh, things. But then certainly I knew that I had that leadership uh, there as well. And otherwise, uh, people won't look at you in that position. And uh, the business journey started in 1992. And today, I'm clocking almost 29 years in business successfully having a global network in 16 countries, in 12 cities in India, supporting uh, 26 franchises from around the world for distribution in uh, India, and doing verticals like cost reduction, technology forecasting, consulting, and uh, four companies uh, of which one is manufacturing and one is IT company as well. And I think life is good. Life has treated me very well. And uh, this is where I feel that today when uh, succession has been done, uh, my entire family is supporting these four companies, two sons, two daughters, two son-in-laws, and one son. I have uh, some time uh, to really spend with others to create additional values into somebody else's uh, life or uh, going on board uh, companies, uh, going on board advisory committees uh, for management and engineering colleges, and mentoring students which gives me a tremendous amount of satisfaction that I'm giving it back to the society. And uh, not only I train my own family members, but then certainly I'm spreading these values across 
uh, in the society. And then these are being appreciated by people. That is where it motivates me to keep doing it again and again. And like I said, said uh, that domestic and international platforms are not uh, new to me. I have been speaking on different topics so far. I must have crossed more than 500 such uh, participations on different panels and speeches and things like that on uh, entirely different variety of subjects, more than 50 to 60. And I feel comfortable uh, in uh, the audience, but then this pandemic has taken away that uh, joy. But then I have chained myself at this age to enjoy meetings uh, digitally. And maybe the frequency has gone up because of that. So with this, uh, I think uh, I could gather whatever I could from my <laughs> uh, last uh, 43, 44 years of uh, career and uh, could uh, give it to you as a part of my introduction. Wow, that's also. totally amazing. I can't help but ask you, has there been any major incident that impacted your life? And what are the lessons that you learned from it? Uh, I can narrate an example where there was a big meeting going on in my job uh, situation uh, where uh, the project of uh, railways was being discussed, where we were supposed to supply some equipment. And uh, there was naturally the meeting was conducted by the chairman of the company and uh, 10 to 15 uh, senior uh, uh, officials were there and I was the lowest uh, in the grade sitting at the last uh, corner of the table. And uh, the chairman was discussing uh, with everyone everything. And then ultimately he realized that I was sitting there quiet for the entire meeting. And uh, he says that, uh, can you introduce yourself and why you are here? So uh, my boss took the lead and said that he's the person who handles uh, railways uh, in our company. And uh, he is here to substantiate if at all there is something which is required. At that time, the chairman said that he should have been the first one to speak, in which case. And then he asked me, young man, uh, would you tell us uh, what are your views? And then, uh, you know, I realized that uh, sitting in front of the chairman, you couldn't be really playing around with words or playing around with stories. So I was very frank and told him uh, that uh, most of the time, the discussion has gone around the subject rather than focusing on the subject. And my views are A, B, C, D. And our chairman was very, very forthright and uh, powerful as far as personality was concerned. And he realized that I was dead serious about what I was talking. And uh, he also realized the dangers I would face thereafter. <laughs> because, you know, going against uh, the management and talking to the chairman, all those things, which really projected the kind of knowledge I had possessed on that particular subject or the supremacy I had it on that subject really baffled most of the people and not many people took it uh, very well on that. Later on, there were consequences, but I think those were handled very well. There was another such meeting which took place of senior management uh, program, which normally is being held in uh, organizations. So I was a part of that. In that senior management program, naturally all the big uh, boys are also there, our bosses and their bosses and things like that. And at that time, there was a point where uh, uh, working modality was being discussed. So I raised my hand as usual. Um, and I said that I have few things to contribute here. Then uh, he asked me, I said that people uh, come uh, early in the morning and decide about the meetings in the evening. They come on Monday and decide the meetings on Sundays, which should be stopped. <laughs> and that was the culture of the organization. And naturally you will understand that it did not go well with uh, the senior management. And uh, uh, at that time, there are many people, there was an uproar in that uh, conference hall, but then uh, at that time, the managing director and the vice chairman stopped everyone. He says that whatever he's saying is right. And that is where I picked up many enemies also. So I had that knack of uh, picking up enemies uh, by being so frank and blunt and calling a spade a spade. And these are the biggest lessons which I learned uh, during uh, this time. I also was uh, fortunate to get an assignment with one of the leading banks uh, to be on their standing committee uh, for two years as a customer representative. And I, while they selected me, I told them, look here, I'm a very aggressive board participant and uh, you may not like my participation. He said, no, no, we require people like that. And let me tell you, I did not last more than six to eight months time 
they call me one or two meetings and thereafter they just let me off it is very easily said than done that people do not like uh, to hear something coming from a junior person or something coming from an outside and uh, they don't want to face the reality or the frankness or the uh, knowledge part of it uh, like for example there were two partners who came for an advice uh, in my office and they both had taken a voluntary retirement scheme uh, from a company and they came here to take my advice at that time i told them hey look here you two are totally different personalities but the events that has brought you together is the same so it does not mean that you can very easily become partners because you are two totally two different people i would not advise you to get into partnership so there three or four months of work i virtually spoiled in half an hour and i said that if you want to take my advice i would say that you form two companies and you sign an agreement uh, uh, and remain autonomous uh, rather than coming together and forming one company and later on they realized that that what i said was right so most of the times people who really uh, talk about me they say that if at all you want to hear the truth and nothing but the truth go to the swami otherwise don't go because he is very blunt he doesn't mix his words and now in this uh, what is the conclusion that i have drawn for the learning uh, or incident uh, whatever that you can term it is that uh, smartness uh, does not always help you you need to be diplomatic and this is where exactly my difference was i did not want to be a, a, a diplomatic personality or i did not want to play politics in an organization and uh, i would always call a spade a spade and i did not want to change my personality because people knew me for my personality and it had given me so many good things in my life and just because i don't get some good uh, oranges or good mangoes uh, you know it does not mean that i should change my behavioral pattern because i was not arrogant i was only frank and i was very impulsive on certain things because anybody lying to me i don't like it and i easily identify that and this is where uh, the personality traits come about everyone does not have all those positive traits they do have negative ones so i do possess couple of negative ones but then positives have overtaken the negatives and this is where i decided to change um, my total course in my life and i took to entrepreneurship uh, rather than remaining in job and saying yes sir to everything that uh, that is work uh, works out and on a hindsight if i really look at it 29 years i do not regret what i took as a decision but it came about only because of the diplomacy or the behavioral uh, politics uh, which is required to sustain yourself in a job situation and which i really did not uh, want to do uh, as a personality great um i'm curious to know has there been or have you faced any situation where your brutal honesty did not work for you my training was such that the probability of failure was virtually negligible because i was trained very hard uh, in the management uh, education at that time the education was really uh, worth uh, taking it uh, these days how it works why well, i don't know but then we were grilled very very badly at that time to improve our personality improve our decision making improve our communications and things like that so i uh, really frankly speaking do not recall such incidences or instances where i may have been honest and failed i can say that i did not give my opinion and the project failed that could be a, a, a very well phrase because i did not warn because of the consequences i'll give you an example specifically there were two of us who were selected uh, to be a head of uh, marketing so before getting into that particular slot the mentor the one who conducted the management development program called each one of us separately and he asked me frankly he i was the first one he called me and he says that are you ready to lead the marketing team i said frankly no i was very honest in saying no he says why do you say so i said look here we have a very wide product range and i'm exposed to only one part of product range and uh, the other part is not known to me and uh, the second candidate which they had selected was exactly on the opposite side he had known the lower side of it he did not Uh, uh look at the higher side of it 
So I expected that he would also project the same kind of thing, which is where I went wrong. He took that opinion and he thanked me for being so frank, etc. But when the second guy came in for interview, he said, well, I can manage that. And uh, naturally, it went well uh, on that and it went in his favor. But let me tell you, in 18 months' time, that decision failed. I really became uh, much uh, higher uh, in the grade uh, than what was promised to me. And I became the business unit chief of uh, that particular uh, zone, etc. So assessment, whenever I have done it, whether it benefited me or not, was not the criterion. So I never used my management principles to really carve out my career. I could have easily said yes and bluffed about it, but then my honesty would have suffered there, which is a very, very long-term shock as far as uh, my behavior is concerned, that people would stop believing me. But my analysis, although I did not succeed in getting that position, but my analysis was liked by most of the managers in my organization. They say that you are stupid. I said, well, fine. I may be stupid, but I did not compromise on my values. I did not compromise on my behavioral traits. And I will be honest whether I suffer or not. People should have that patience to know that a good thing or a sincere effort or an honest effort never fails. Maybe the results, you may not get it immediately, but then you will get it ultimately. What about impact in your own business? And we know how corrupt the system was in those days, right? So has your honesty been always an advantage for you? I would say that my honesty or for that matter, my nature or the way I take uh, assignments, even in my business, has not given me a disadvantage. Of course, the disadvantages are the kind uh, which I told you earlier, that they could be a short-term disadvantage, but in a longer term, people understand. So any suggestion given by me is maybe initially people get offended by that, but then I know for sure within six months, they implement the same suggestion as their own. So uh, this has been a trend which is continuing and that is what motivates me from really overlooking all the comments to give up my honesty or give up my ethics or give up my integrity or character, change in character or whatever it is. All those terms, uh, like we always say, is that the integrity matters, credibility matters, character matters, honesty matters, sincerity of purpose matters. So all those things are at the back of my mind. So whenever I'm doing something, I always check whether I'm hurting any of these things. If I am, I stop it there itself. So as a leader in my organization, everyone knows that uh, everyone has an access to me very easily. They can call me and come up anytime. And, uh, but they also know that there is no scope for being irrelevant, illogical, or irrational. As far as uh, discussion goes, uh, everyone has to be very prepared with due homework uh, from their side. And the instruction is that you can bring all kinds of problems to me. I will provide solutions. But the thing is that when you are coming with a problem, you must have three alternate solutions available with you. And which is the best one you should recommend. If I not to that, fine, you go ahead. But if I do not, I will justify why that is not there. And I will recommend maybe uh, out of those three, something else or a totally different solution to you. And when you realize uh, uh, that the person sitting in front of you is totally satisfied with that kind of an approach, you can say the relationship between the boss and the subordinate really virtually becomes very, very uh, comfortable. And people do not fear me. They know that I am perfectionist, but they don't fear me. They do not uh, find it difficult uh, to converse with me because they know for sure, ultimately when they come out of my cabin, they will be thoroughly educated on a particular concept or on a particular event or a situation. And this is the kind of leadership which I have uh, projected in my organization. And honesty has never, never troubled me. You mentioned the word perfectionism. So uh, is perfectionism your strength or your weakness? It is the uh, two sides of the same coin. <laughs> so uh, maybe you look at, uh, meaning a perspective defines whether it is strength or weakness. It certainly, I do not treat it as a weakness because uh, it uh, perfection has given me a lot many things in my life. Uh, and people uh, know you for that and people come to get mentored 
uh, from you to become a perfectionist because they have seen my graph at least personally speaking i talked uh, based on my own experiences and this is where uh, whatever i may say may be taken as a truth uh, or maybe as a you can say a statement which uh, gets automatically substantiated uh, when people look at my organization or what uh, where i have placed at a social status or a professional status or in whatever manner so i would prefer to be a perfectionist uh, whether uh, it is a strong point or a weak point right right so typically when you are a perfectionist you tend to micromanage right uh, especially when you are a startup you you sort of get down to doing every single thing so uh, did that interfere did your perfectionist trait interfere in the way you did your business especially when you started up i would like to be a perfect leader but when it gets dissolved uh, to lower down levels you have to come down to their wavelength and i know for sure the kind of exposure i have got in terms of academics in terms of experiences in terms of my family background or uh, uh, my jobs or my bosses you know i was trained well so i could afford to be a perfectionist and then survive but everyone cannot but then i decided to develop that habit of training people so the concept which i learned and succeeded i always try to uh, give it to people like i told you that when somebody is coming to me with a problem i am asking them to bring three solutions in the bargain i am training them to think to make decisions so they become perfectionists also tomorrow so i have trained several such uh, people uh, below me or uh, with me who have worked with me uh, and made them also go towards that perfectionism why go anywhere else my own family members they have been very intelligent and they have managed uh, this succession very well but then there is a space which i have carved out which i give it to them the moment uh, they are going a little astray uh, they come down they realize that there is something wrong in this they come to me at that time i guide but otherwise there is a free way so i do not interfere in their space and this is where i think it tells well uh, it's a need to know uh, sort of a uh, behavior or maybe you convince me or i convince you a uh, sort of a logic so i'm just a man of the house so it doesn't mean that my rules will be Uh, prevalent in the house no so if somebody convinces me whether it is my grandson or my son or my daughter or whoever it is if they convince me so the rule is simple either you convince me or i convince you invariably i'll end up convincing them that is a part but then <laughs> but the process is very well understood so it trains somebody's mind and which is the uh, beauty of the entire process that i am not holding anything to myself otherwise i won't be doing so many such programs i won't be talking to so many people because whatever i have it i want to just let it go open into the society and whoever takes even one or two or 10 tips out of this i think uh, will make a good career out of that right sir you have a long innings as a business owner an entrepreneur uh, is there any trait skill or a behavior that you wish you had before you became a leader there was a challenge which was thrown to me when i was in uh, a particular standard uh, that time either school or college i don't remember and somebody said that all the talents are inborn they can't be acquired so at that time i had taken a challenge uh, i said that uh, you name the talents and i'll acquire it and show it to you so there were three talents which were given to me uh, one is music second is arts Uh, sketching and the third one is uh, sports so uh, i said give me 6 years and after 6 years uh, i'll show it to you uh, where exactly i am with respect to these three talents and let me tell you after 6 years i was playing nationals in sports i exhibited my pencil sketches in balgandhar or rangamandir and uh, the music i did uh, more than 35 to 40 Uh, stage programs on music i used to sing i used to come here and things like that i sang on all india radio because at that time there was no television so at that time i sang on all india radio uh, uh, ramayana which uh, was composed by our uh, uh, alumni friends in when i was in i am bangalore so these talents were acquired in 6 years and i showed it to people that everything can be acquired provided you work it out 
Now, talking about uh, your question, this example, why I took it? Because everything can be acquired. And I was in a rush to acquire so many things which could lead me to a career which I had planned. I had planned a career in marketing. So naturally, I was going towards leadership. And in a leader, what are those personality traits which are required? And for that, what are the complementary trainings uh, which uh, one would require? So maybe I was trained for all those things. But then certainly, I missed on one thing. One was uh, that uh, the control of impulse, impulsive uh, nature, because you are in a hurry to answer, because you know many things. Uh, so uh, before somebody finishes that question, I used to start answering it. So maybe I should have spent some time in meditation. I should have gone to some meditation courses uh, at that time to control my impulses. Uh, this is what uh, I lack. Second thing is that on human relations, uh, everything revolves around relationships. And I used to fancy uh, the subject uh, psychology uh, very much when I was in college. And I wanted to do my PhD after my MBA in psychology. But then uh, the needs were different at that time. So I couldn't have spent uh, more time in education. So I had to start working. So that remained uh, as a part of my training. If I would have done some PhD in psychology, maybe today I would be doing uh, different things the way you are doing uh, coaching. Maybe I would have become some kind of a, a coach in uh, psychometry or things like that. So uh, these are two, three things uh, on uh, personality level, which I thought I should have trained myself. Otherwise, content-wise on engineering and management, I think uh, we were trained. Hey, thank you so much for watching up until this far. Mr. Goswami and I spoke so much more on leadership lessons, uh, where he's sharing his uh, lessons learned, and he's also giving valuable lessons to all you leaders out there. So if you want to catch up, uh, look out for the concluding part, which will be published next week, same time. Till then, if you have any questions for him or me, do leave it in the comment section below or you may reach out to me in any of the social media platforms. I'll see you next week. Until then, stay home, stay safe.